Those who dream prepare the way. This Advent season, these four weeks leading up to Christmas where the church eagerly anticipates and participates by faith in the fullness of God's kingdom on earth as in heaven. We at Spirit in the Hills are gathering to dream, focusing on the theme, those who dream. As we ask God to rekindle our imagination to fill us with hope and center us in God's dream. Welcome to Worship with Spirit in the Hills Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Drew Ingram. And whether it is your first time here or you are back again, your presence with us in worship is a gift to our community. And we give thanks that God has gathered us together. We hope you'll join us for worship live every Sunday at 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube and on our website, spiritinthehills.org, wherever you're watching this video. Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel and follow our page, like this video, and share it with a friend. In the call to worship that you are about to hear and be invited to participate in, you'll see words on the screen throughout the worship service uh, that invite you to share in those words as well, whether in your heart, in your head, or uh, verbally out loud. In this call to worship, you'll hear words that mention entering into a space. And that might seem slightly odd since we aren't gathered together in the same space. I hope you hear these words as an invitation to sacred space. To wake up and recognize the presence of God in the space that you are in right now. To recognize God's presence with you. To enter into a space that we create with one another, even when we aren't in the same physical location. And make a bit of space in your life during these next minutes to pray, to listen, to reflect, and trust that the Holy Spirit is with you. John the Baptist said, prepare the way. So family of faith. How do we prepare our minds for worship? We silence the inner critic. We let go of busy thoughts. We make space for God to speak. How do we prepare our hearts for worship? We bless all emotions. We feel what we feel. We open ourselves up to be moved. How do we prepare our bodies for worship? We take in the scent sight and feel of this space. We breathe in God's mercy. We exhale God's love. How do we prepare our souls for worship? We bring our full selves into this space. We wear our hearts on our sleeves. We trust that even now, God is here. Family of faith, what we practice in worship, we must live out in our daily lives. So prepare the way. Let us worship holy God. I dream of the first fish of opening season. I dream of a long day where each song is found in pain. I dream of family home for the holidays. I dream of good books and homemade meals. I dream of sunset drives with the windows down. These are all beautiful dreams, but I also have virgin dreams. I dream of conversations across party lines. I dream of more bridges and less walls. I dream of more laughter and less fear. I dream of more listening and less tears. But most of all, I dream of peace like a river. Today, we light the candle of peace. May God remind us that there is another way. I invite you to grab your Bible and open it up to Mark chapter 1 or open a new tab in your web browser, the Bible app on your phone, however you would like to dive into scripture today. We're going to be reading from Mark chapter 1. We begin with this prayer. Please pray with me. God of peace, we must admit there are a million things on our mind. We would like to be as focused as John the Baptist, preparing the way, gathering the crowd, spreading the word of your arrival. Maybe then we'd know peace. 
However, more often than not, we are a swirling compilation of grocery lists, text messages, emails, and over-referenced to-do lists. So today, we ask for your help in preparing the way. Could you start with our ears and then maybe move to our hearts? We'd like to hear you more clearly. Maybe then we'll know peace. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. So open your Bible to Mark chapter 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 8. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, and we respond, Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord, and we respond, praise to you, O Christ. Prepare the way. Prepare the way. But before we dive right in and hear John the Baptist echoing Elijah and Isaiah's cry in the wilderness, let me prepare the way for the word of God by providing a bit of context. Our gospel reading starts at the very beginning of Mark. Chapter 1, verse 1, and there are a few interesting things of note about this beginning. You see, Mark answers the question that the majority of his gospel centers around. The question, who is Jesus? Mark answers it right here at the very beginning in his own voice. Who is Jesus is a question present throughout the text. One that Jesus himself will ask his disciples right in the middle of the gospel account in chapter 8. And a question that most everyone seems to kind of miss. But here in verse 1, Mark answers it. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the Christ. The Greek word for the Messiah. The anointed one. The Son of God. And in this first verse, Mark also coins the term gospel, the Greek word euangelion, meaning good news. You see, at the time Mark is writing this account, the word euangelion was most, almost exclusively used to announce the good news of the Roman Empire. Often after another military victory or conquest, the expansion of the empire, hear the good news about Caesar. Caesar, who, by the way, was often seen as a son of God. Finally, this is kind of the only pretext or context Mark gives us. It's the only time we really hear Mark talk to us directly. So it's all that he gives us before jumping right into the midst of the story, the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. We get John the Baptist, and then Jesus will come be baptized immediately after the text that we read this morning. So we don't quite get to the baptism yet, but we prepare, and we hear the prophetic message of Isaiah and of John. Okay, now that we've prepared to prepare, let's prepare. It is difficult to imagine John the Baptist on the bank of the River Jordan proclaiming a message to the crowds. A message, well, I should say it's difficult to imagine crowds right now. Being face to face with so many. It can be hard to understand that John's message was one that upsets and offends the things that we have institutionalized as normal to the point where John will be arrested and killed. John's message is not one of self-aggrandizement. 
It's not, hey, I'm the best. It's not trying to build the biggest follower base to be the best influencer. John is not building out his brand as John the Baptist or the baptizer. No, no, John's message is about Jesus and what God is doing and will do through Jesus. John's message preempts and subverts those who think they know who is powerful. The one with the biggest following, the one with the most money, the highest position of authority. And it's also, John's message is also preempting and subverting what we thought we know, knew about how to be powerful. Because he says Jesus is the one who is more powerful. More powerful than John. More powerful than Caesar, than Herod, than Satan, than death itself. Jesus, the one who is more powerful, is on his way. About to arrive. This advent. This coming of Christ. This is a risky proposition John makes to directly challenge the powers, those worldly and otherworldly. John and those who come to hear him are boldly and with great risk joining in cries for the reign of God, not the reign of Caesar, the reign of God, not the reign of sin, the reign of God, not the reign of death, the reign of God. We too... In the waters of baptism are given the call to be messengers, to be voices crying out in the wilderness, to raise a finger and point to Christ who is to come, who was, who is, who is to come. We are called and anointed by God's Holy Spirit in the waters of baptism to prepare the way for God with us. Emmanuel. To be messengers declaring the places God is present, the ways God desires us to live, and that the world we see in front of us is not all there is, can, will, or should be. That another way is possible, the way of Jesus, the way of God's reign. We're given the call to be those who dream. And to be messengers about God's dream as we face the troubles of the world receptively, perceptively, and attentively. Striving for justice and peace and trusting that we shall overcome by the grace of God and with the help of God. Those who dream, like Mark, know that what we see and know is just the beginning of the good news, just the beginning of the gospel, that the kingdom of God has come near. That is an invitation to prepare for the kingdom of God right here, right now, unto eternity. You see, when Mark starts his gospel account, the beginning of the good news, Mark is inviting us to see the whole of Christ's life, ministry, death, and resurrection as the beginning. Mark's gospel account ends abruptly in the same way to invite us in to know that we live the next act of the story because Christ continues to be with us by the power of the Holy Spirit in water and wine and bread in community. Mark invites you and me and everyone here and now and everywhere and every time to join in what God is up to in the world. To come and answer the question, who is Jesus, with our very lives as we prepare the way for the fullness of God's reign of shalom, of wholeness, of peace and right relationship. As we join in God's dream of mountains made low and valleys exalted. As all are warmed with the same sun of righteousness and watered with the spirit-filled rain of grace. So we follow John the Baptist's lead and point to Christ who was, who is, and is to come. We follow Christ in serving all people and seeking wholeness where there is brokenness. We make amends and seek forgiveness and reconciliation. We confess and repent and turn again to God. 
We renounce the forces of evil and death that defy God. We proclaim the good news that God's reign is at hand. We trust that Christ is the one who is stronger, the one who binds up the ones who seek to rule in God's stead. We give generously, believing God's abundance is enough for all. We consider the needs of others ahead of our own needs. Rejoice! Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Dream. Get caught up in the awe and wonder of our remarkable God, present everywhere and in all things. May God's dream so guide your thoughts, waking and sleeping, that you cannot help but participate now in the way of Jesus, life everlasting and love abundant. Those who dream prepare the way. Those who dream prepare the way. Thank you for dreaming with us today of a world that looks more like Jesus of preparing the way for that dream to come into reality, a world that leads with love, that is open to the presence of God in unexpected ways, places, and people, that's filled with hope and peace like the two candles that we lit today on our Advent wreath. We dream of a world led by love that crosses boundaries and divisions and defies social norms for the sake of bringing wholeness where there is brokenness in creation. Thank you for daring to dream and to be bold, risk-taking messengers alongside God's word that this is not the fullness of what God intends for us. That our hope is in the Lord alone. That our peace is in the person of Christ. We hope that you will join us every Sunday for worship online right now on our website and wherever you're watching this video. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Please share in the comments your answer to this question. What dream are you preparing the way for? What dream are you preparing the way for? And receive this benediction. It takes strength to dream. I imagine that's why many choose not to. It is easier simply to sleep. But there are always those who dream. Those who are up at night picturing what could be. May the God whose dreams are more magnificent than we can imagine. Place in us dreams of heaven on earth. Here and now and yet to come. May the incarnate love of God, Jesus the Christ, lead us by faith, even when not by sight, into the coming kingdom way. May the Holy Spirit ignite our dreams, illumine God's dream within us, and kindle our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and our bodies to keep awake and to prepare the way for the new thing God is doing in our midst. Holy God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, bless you and keep you always. Amen.
I'll reach high for the stars, but I won't forget the scars of Christ who died to show that the dreams for It's free.